welcoming the stars of Jailbreak Lovers, we have with us today executive producer and star Catherine Bell, along with her co-star Tom Stevens. I will now open the floor to questions for the cats. First up, we have Tamara Rollins. Tamara? Hi, how are you? I'm good, Tamara, how are you doing? I'm good, thank you. So, <clears throat> Toby always, always followed the rules and did what was expected of her. Can you guys identify with the character's desire to be carefree, coloring outside the lines, not being perfect, or simply being wild and free for once? <laughs> um, well, I think, I think probably anyone could relate to that. Hopefully people don't resort to this sort of uh, <laughs> craziness, but um, you know, I think there's, there's always that idea of like, oh, what if I, you know, broke the rules and did something wild for, for a moment, you know, I think that's what, um, we, I, I wanted to at least give a sense of like, people are always going, why, why would someone do this? You know, why would someone break the law and, and do something like this? And hopefully we give you guys a little insight into to where that comes from. Thank you. Yeah, and I, I agree. I think that, I think that every person needs to kind of check in on their life at some point and go, am I, am I coloring too within the lines or do I need to go outside of my comfort zone? Because I think out in your comfort zone, outside your comfort zone is where you really learn who you are. Yeah. Thank you. Wonderful. Thank you. Up next, we have a question from Suzanne. Suzanne, you may feel free to unmute. Hi, uh, Catherine, uh, since you were a producer on this movie, um, did you have any influence over the tone of the movie? It's a little less serious than most Lifetime movies I've seen. Um, you know, Katie Boland is our beautiful director. She she brought her vision to this, which was this playful and high energy and sexy and fun spirit. You know, I, I really, I think Tom and I both really enjoyed um, making this movie because it had all of that in it. It was just this fast pace and just wild adventure that these two were on. And, um, uh, you know, definitely I, I, you have some say as a producer, but I got to say it all just kind of came together magically. There wasn't a whole lot to do except, you know, become this character on my end, you know. And yeah. is that same for you, Tom? Yeah, no, I mean, I, I didn't have the same kind of kind of hand in it as as Catherine did but I mean it was it, what we brought kind of fit exactly what Katie wanted what Catherine and I were doing uh and it was just it was just so fun to just like we shot so many scenes kind of like back to back to back to back and we always found like a fun way of connecting as these two people because in the prison it was it was like you know a secret love and then when we were out in the cabin it was it was more spontaneous and free Mm -hmm. And and every single time Catherine and I brought uh, like a, a really strong connection, and it, and yeah, it was just always fun. You know, every scene was always fun to shoot. Well, we, thanks. We it was fun to wanna, watch too. Uh, <laughs> good. We joke we want to do a sequel. I don't think it'll ever happen. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that they're not together. But we had too much fun making. So. As long as you have dogs, that's the good thing. <laughs> right. Exactly. Pen, prison pen pals and dogs. Mm -hmm. Thank you. <laughs> Wonderful. Thank you, Suzanne. Up next, we have Jamie. Jamie, you may feel free to unmute. Whoops. Hi. Thanks for talking to us today. So um, can you kind of talk about when you're when you're doing something that's based on real people, like how can you talk about balancing kind of what you pull from that versus what you're able to creatively add <laughs> from yourself for both of you? Tom, you go. Yeah, Catherine. Oh, you want me to go? Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, Jamie, good to see you again. You too. Uh, yeah, it's, I think with John, he, like with Maynard, uh, there was, there wasn't a lot about him. There, there's kind of the story. There's, there's a lot, uh, a lot uh, of, of Molly and of like, of, of everything that, that she went through. But uh, for, for John, it was, it was kind of more free for me to just, bring the the foil to her husband do you know what I mean like I had to I had to represent something that was something that she was missing in her life mm -hmm. and 
And it was a more free experience to build a character rather than actually like, you know, having interviews that I could bounce off of like mm. Catherine obviously had. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, on the other hand, had a lot of interviews and I watched all, all the ones that I could find of Toby. Um, obviously, I don't look anything like her, so I gave that up quickly, but there, there's an essence to her that I tried to get, you know, there's just, she's got that little bit of a the Kansas accent and um, yeah, just this, this sweet woman who really just uh, was totally taken by surprise by this guy and it just completely altered the course of her life. But um, yeah, it was a lot of fun trying to become this, this woman who's very different than myself. Okay, thank you so much, both of you. Thank you. Thanks, Jamie. Thank you, Jamie. Up next is Mike Hughes. Mike, feel free to unmute. Okay, there we go. Okay, cool. Hey, um, probably shortly after you finish this, another real life case like this came up in Alabama where someone escaped mm -hmm. the prison lady. And yeah. I was wondering, did this give you like special interest in it? Did you kind of follow that news story extra special? Did you maybe root for them or, or anything like that? I mean, I, you know, yeah, it was unbelievable that that happened. It was like, okay, life imitating art, imitating real life. You know, it was, uh, it's interesting that this happens a fair amount, you know, that these guys are in this unusual situation in a prison and, and fall for each other. Um, the idea for me of crossing that line and going, yeah, let's break out of jail. I mean, really, you're never going to get away with it, you know? Um, that one ended very tragically, but uh, yeah, it's just fascinating. You didn't yeah, root I, for them. I, I, <laughs> was were you that? rooting for them, Catherine? Was I? <laughs> I, <laughs> I mean, I don't think no. I wasn't really thinking about it either way. It was very, very sad, of course, how it ended. But yeah, um, yeah I would have would have preferred a happier ending than that for sure. Yeah, and and we kind of tell we tell. Uh, fictitious fun side of this and i mean the true story between toby and john is you know a little darker than this like in reality than than, than the story that we told and i'm sure that that story was darker too yeah. so i mean we can have fun with this because we're making a movie about it but you know these people were going through something um yeah that's it's 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 it's, it's more serious when it's real mm -hmm. <laughs> Thanks. Yeah. Wonderful. Thank you, Mike. Up next, we have Jay Bobbin. Jay, feel free to unmute. Hi, folks. Hi, Catherine. How are you? Hi, Jay. Hi, good to yeah. see you. Jay. Catherine, question for you. You've done non-edgy for so many years <laughs> now. To step back into something that is decidedly edgy, mm -hmm. an actor acts, obviously, that's their profession, but it wasn't an easy thing for you, or did it take working up to this a little bit, having done Cassie for so many years? Uh, yeah, you know what, I, um, it's always challenging to me, which is probably why I love acting so much. It's never just like, oh, piece of cake. Like, it's like, oh, who, who is this person? And in the beginning, you don't know who they are, or how to become them and watching her interviews and kind of just trying to, to work on that was, um, was a beautiful challenge. I really loved it. Really, really loved stepping into this and edgy, edgy and also, um, a very kind of withdrawn, like kind of toned down person as well. Someone who's not so confident or whatever. So it was, it was just a lot of fun for me to play all of those things. Thanks a lot. Yeah, it was fun to witness actually. It was fun to, yeah. it was fun to watch you build the character. Yeah. yeah. Thank, you. thank you. We had so much fun together. I know. Awesome. Thank you, Jay. Up next, we have Starry Constellation Magazine. <laughs> Well, Tom, they say you should never work with kids and animals on screen, and you worked with a number of dogs. Talk about the training you went through for dog training. Uh, so I, I'm I'm an advocate for for Cesar Milan and everything that he does with behavioral science and dog science. And uh, I have a dog of my own that I have put through a rigorous training. Uh, it, it, it comes naturally to me to to be around animals and to to be like you know an alpha or like a calm assertive presence with them so that wasn't hard for me what was tricky was when the dogs didn't care that i was a calm presence or you know authoritative presence and they were like oh my turn is behind the camera and i can do whatever i want right now for the next 30 seconds while the cameras are rolling and he starts eating a toy in the middle of our scene. So there's like 
there's certain things that you can't control <laughs> when like a dog sits on the side and he just kind of starts doing his own thing. But there's, there's like a lot of things that you can do to just be like the calm presence for the dogs that they respect. Um, they say don't work with animals because animals are in the moment and the audience will always be drawn to them. So it kind of forces you to be in the moment with the dog. And then it's interesting for the audience to watch. Awesome. Well, thank you. Um, up next, we have <clears throat> Cynthia Horner. Hello. Hi. Um, hi, hi, hi. I would like to ask both of you this question. What is a memorable behind the scenes moment that you can tell us about when you were filming? Hmm. Hmm. There were a lot. There were a lot. Hey. I instantly thought of the car chase stuff. That was just so much oh. fun. That was so much fun. Yeah, actually driving and then on, on the top of the truck where they're towing you and you're pretending there's so much going on. We've had some good yeah. laughs. And you're getting arrested. I I think I loved, I loved the feeling is when we got out of week one, when we got out of the prison, mm -hmm. there was like, there was, it, I mean, we were shooting a prison movie. So a lot of it had to be done on location in this corrections facility. And there, it, it felt very much like repeated scenes. Like we were doing the like similar scenes over and over and over again in this box. And mm -hmm. then when we got out of that week, it was like this freedom just opened up and it really felt like the characters got to like, go and see new places and go to different restaurants <laughs> and do all this stuff. It was very much what the, what the characters go through. So I love that like transition into, into the, the Toby mm. and John being free period. True. I also really loved all the stuff in the cabin. It was just a, such a tiny little cabin and our whole crew really bonded. Just, it was, you know, just, it was, it was Halloween too, right? And the, the crew was, oh, yeah, with we, uh, <laughs> crazy costumes on. <laughs> yeah. We were, and we our, were like, our Toby in our little, yeah. John costumes <laughs> uh, and and like and it it like nearly drowned us in rain it was pouring right. rain so hard it was like flooding around the cabin it was crazy right. and then Vancouver. our deep he's in a sumo suit and it was hilarious <laughs> wow you guys had great stories to tell thank you yes. no thank worries, you Cynthia. Cynthia. <laughs> wonderful thank you Cynthia <clears throat> up, next, up next we have Rick Bentley Rick? Hi, can you hear me? There you are. Hi. Great, great. I'm sorry. Hey, Catherine, I'm just curious. This, this sort of rip from the headlines is something that's been going on for years. And, and obviously, there's a big audience for that out there. Do you think it's a, a, a situation of people being sort of uh, living vicariously through these wild moments mm. or is it by there by the grace of God goes me? Oh man, I, you know, I'm sure there's just that natural curiosity that all humans have of like, what is going on in someone else's world, you know? And yes, this is a crazy world. It's something that hopefully most people will never experience. And then there's that other, you know, the concept of what were they thinking? Why would somebody do that? So hopefully they get a little taste of that with what Tom and I did, you know, just the, how they fell in love and what led them to this crazy idea that they might get away with running away together, you know? Thank you. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you, Rick. Up next is Luann Lee. Luann? Yeah, Catherine, uh, you were talking about the challenge and how you really adore the challenge in acting. And you've been doing it a long time. So what is it that you like best about acting in television? And what do you like the least? Television as opposed to film, you mean, or just in general acting? Well, just in general acting. Yeah, I think, um, hmm, I, I love so much about it. I love the, the process. I love finding the character. And as I mentioned, the challenges of that, it, it keeps me on my toes and always wanting to improve and be better. And even up until the, the scene is over, you're still okay, well, the next take, I want to try this. I want to do that. I want to make this better, or different. Um, I love the camaraderie and the, there's just such a sense of, of family in these, on these shows that you do together, movies, shows, whatever. Um, 
it just made such beautiful people. I, I so much I love about it. I love the, the, the effect it has on people when they're watching it. Um, I think probably I, I love the adventure of travel and going to different locations, but sometimes that's challenging for my family, you know, just to be away so much. So that's probably if I could say there's something I don't like about it, sometimes that gets challenging. But again, you just I'm so grateful for what I what I get to do. So I got no complaints. So what's the worst part of it? <laughs> yeah, I mean, I think that I think, you know, being alone in a hotel room for weeks at a time, especially in COVID, there was one stretch. Um, I took my son to Toronto for good, which was 13 weeks away from home. I couldn't go back and forth because of the travel quarantine. That was that was intense. Oh, wow. Thank you. There, thank you. Thank you, Lee. And then we have <coughs> Steve Gitlow. Steve? Hey, how are you guys? Hey. Good, good. <laughs> Good. Um, I just wanted to ask, how familiar were you or at all familiar with this story? Uh, was it, or was it all kind of news to both of you when you got the script? Um, I hadn't heard of it at all. When I started telling people about it, a lot of people remembered seeing it on the news. It was on Dateline and Anderson Cooper and all of that. But I hadn't heard of it at all. You, Tom? Yeah, no, same. Uh, the, the escaping out of prison in a dog crate. I think it maybe rang a bell, but maybe I'm like, yeah, maybe that's just a, a logical way to sneak out of prison. Why not? Uh, but the, the case itself, I, I hadn't, I hadn't heard anything about it. And then I started reading the script and it was just so fun. Yeah. And Tom, can you actually fit in a dog crate? <laughs> easily, easily. That dog crate was too easy to fit into. I wanted a smaller one. I wanted to do contortion, you know? <laughs> Thanks so much. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you. And we're going to be wrapping here momentarily, but I see two more hands are up. Um, Jamie from Sci-Fi Vision, did you have another question? Uh, yeah, I can go again. I was going to ask about the dog crate. But, um, so I <laughs> this, what did the two of you learn about yourselves from working on this show, either as performers or just as people in general? Ooh. Ooh. Um, wow. Tom? Do you have an answer? Let me think about that. <laughs> I, I think what I learned about myself was it's the, the, with, with all the challenges that, that came with this, there, there's a lot of, of, of layers to John and playing John. And when I ever felt like I was kind of lost in it, all I knew I had to do was connect with Catherine. Mm -hmm. Um, and I don't know if I learned that about myself, but I did learn that I can trust in Catherine whenever I feel like I'm lost in a scene. Is that, is that uh, me learning something? I don't know. I learned that about <laughs> Catherine. Mm, thank you. Yeah, I, I had such an incredible time working with you and um, our connection. It was just really, really special. Really just like yeah. you said, you look in your eyes and it was like all there. And I don't know, it was, yeah. it was um, probably just a great realization that, that I can do this sort of a role, which was so different for me and being able to yeah. trust in you and just making that happen. Was so magical. Yeah. Well, thank you. And I enjoyed it. So oh, I'm so you, glad. Jamie. we loved it too. <laughs> Awesome. And now our final question is from Mike Hughes. Mike? <clears throat> yeah, I'll just ask real briefly about your impressions of working when you were in the, the correctional facility there. It looked like it wasn't a high security one. It looked like it was maybe medium or low security facility. What things struck you about it there? And did you get a chance to interact with the prisoners at all? Were mm -hmm. they friendly to you? But just give us your overall impressions. Yeah, it, yeah, well, it wasn't, it wasn't an active prison, so it was actually shut down. So, but still, I, for me, it was very, Tom, you were the one in the cell, but such, so, so cold, so impersonal. I can't even imagine being in a cell like that for years or for life. It's just, wow, wow, you really just realize what, what that experience could be like, just a little taste of it. Yeah. Um, I, again, it's like, it's, it's an old uh, youth center, so it's a youth correctional center. Uh, in Burnaby that we were shooting in and all the all the the other prisoners were background so you know not actual prisoners uh, but I did get a chance on my other show out in Halifax I got to talk to uh, a lady on our crew who had spent four months in prison that year on on a charge that she was serving from years prior we just all caught up with her 
and she's a good friend of mine. And we sat down and just like had, she gave me as much insight on what living in prison was like. And I just asked for words that would come up in her mind every day. Like what's something that you would think every single day and frustration is a big one. Mm. And you can feel frustrated in places like that. Cause it, like Catherine said, it's so confined and so isolating and, and there's no time and you just, it's, it's very, it's very plain and uncomfortable. Like there's no cushions. So you could imagine a human being whose mind needs stimulation mm. would become completely frustrated in a situation like that. Okay. Thanks. Thank you. And thank you, Catherine and Tom for joining us today. Jailbreak Lovers premieres Saturday, July 2nd at 8 p.m. 7 central only on Lifetime.